In 2005, the year Hurricane Katrina struck New Orleans, the average 48-hour track error for hurricane predictions was 110 nautical miles. This means two days before a hurricane made landfall, we could expect the prediction for where it would strike to be wrong by an average of 125 statute miles. 125 miles is about the difference between evacuating New Orleans, Louisiana, and Pensacola, Florida. In 1990, that error was 200 miles. Today, it's about 65. 200 to 125 to 65 in 27 years. What's changed? Meteorology has gotten better. Satellites have gotten more sophisticated, yes. There's one particular tool in scientists' and forecasters' bag of tricks that gets exponentially better every year and perhaps more than anything else has been instrumental to their growing capability to make predictions and to save lives. And it has to do with make-believe. All over the world today, there are big, powerful supercomputers whose job it is to pretend to be storms. We can see how they'll move, how they'll strengthen and weaken, and every year these machines get bigger and faster and therefore better able to pretend to be those storms. Technically, we call it simulation and modeling, but it's really about making the computers pretend. And I know that sounds like a play school kind of thing to say, but why use a $5 word when a 50 cent one will work? We make the computer pretend. There's all sorts of really interesting things going on in this world that are either too big or too small or too fast or too slow or too expensive or too dangerous for us to touch with our hands or watch with our eyes. But we can make the computer pretend. Now, hurricanes are big and fast and dangerous. How about something small? Our bodies are made up in part of proteins which perform many important tasks. In order to function, these proteins first have to assemble themselves or fold into particular shapes. Now, there's a lot about the process of protein folding inside the body that we don't yet understand, but we do know that when this process goes wrong, we can wind up with conditions called proteopathies. These are things like Huntington's, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's. We would like to have the ability to watch these proteins misfold inside the body, but that's not practical. Now, we do understand most of the physics and chemistry involved, so we can make the computer pretend Watch the proteins fold and misfold inside the computer simulation. Watch for the critical moment where things go wrong and use that knowledge to suggest drugs that could help. Now, the rules of this game and the outcome have to be managed by experts in this field, biochemists perhaps, but it gives them an incredible and potentially life-saving capability that they otherwise would not have. Let's talk about something expensive. In 2003, Goodyear, the largest American tire maker, was in trouble. They were falling behind their overseas competitors. They had a product cycle that took three years to go from inception to market. And it was based in large part on educated guesswork. They would build tires, test how they performed, and importantly, they would see how they would wear out over time. And that year, they made a key decision. Stop doing, start pretending. They used supercomputers to pretend to be tires, watched how they performed on pavement, on gravel, on water, on sand. But most importantly, they used those simulations to predict how the tires would age over time. And the result was that three-year cycle became a one-year cycle. And building and testing tires went from 40% of their R&D budget to 15. Three years later, they posted record profits. How about something slow? Computers can pretend to be the world, too, but not yet all of it. Climate change may be the key issue of our time, and computing can let us see how our decisions today impact the future. We can model the atmosphere and make the computer pretend 
to be the decades and centuries that pass as we adjust carbon or methane or ozone or ash. But there's not yet enough computing power in the world for us to turn as many of those knobs as quickly and in as many combinations as we would like. But we're on our way. And the day will come that the countries of the world will be able to come together, negotiate climate treaties armed with computers powerful enough to pretend to be the planet and know quickly and confidently what the decisions they make that day will mean for the future of the Earth. A lot of human effort is spent trying to figure out how the world works, trying to understand the unknown. And faced with the unknown, we have some choices. Doing is very important, but we can also pretend. And this is why computing matters at virtually every scale and in every field. In fact, where I work at the Tandy Supercomputing Center, we play everywhere along this spectrum, from helping frontline university researchers do basic science to helping transfer technologies out of the university research lab into the marketplace to helping small and mid-sized companies do today what Goodyear did 15 years ago. But it's not just about big, huge, million-dollar machines. If you recall that protein folding problem I talked about a little bit ago, when you go home today, you can actually join your PC or even your phone to a worldwide network of computers pretending together to fold proteins. It's called Folding at Home. And there's a lot of other really worthy projects out there, too, that I hope you'll check out. Because when the experts set the rules of the game and let computers play pretend, the results can change the world. Thank you. <laughs>